Educating, empowering, and inspiring you to live healthier is our mission. So let's begin. Hey, health warriors. This is episode number 75 of the Life, Strength, and Health podcast. I'm Kim and I'm joined with Jamal. Greetings, everyone. And uh, peace and blessings. Yes. And thank you for joining us for this episode. In this episode, we are going to talk about the importance of seasonal detoxes. But before we dive into today's episode, We just want to let you know that this show is sponsored by HealthWarrior.co. HealthWarrior.co is our private health community geared towards giving you the education, accountability, and support to help you live a more natural and holistic lifestyle. And we do that by giving you access to our health library where we have courses on various aspects of health and living a natural lifestyle. You get access to our food and recipe library. Uh, You get access to our interactive health forum and our community there. And uh, you also get access to our monthly live training and Q&A sessions. There are exclusive member perks and discounts such as up to uh, 40% off products and programs and up to $30 off services here at Life, Strength and Health and so much more. So to learn more about our private health community or to join, just visit healthwarrior.co. So now let's segue into uh, our organic food for thought. And this episode's organic food for thought is on the dangers of sitting and the power of walking. And Dr. Mercola recently published research um, that he did on his site about sitting for long periods of time and the power of walking. And what the study revealed was that The more time you spend sitting, the shorter and less healthy your life will tend to be. Uh, Muscle contraction decreases blood flow through your body, reducing the efficiency of biological processes. So for every hour you sit, your life expectancy decreases by two hours. Yes, uh, research has also found that sitting for more than three hours a day causes 3.8% of all causes of death. You know, we're we're in a time where everything isn't as physical as it used to be. Everyone had like physical jobs and it's like the more we advance with our technology, the less physical our jobs become. All of the physical jobs now are done by machinery, right? right? Uh we we take transportation, we drive places. And now, you know, like very shortly, what you're going to see within, I would say, probably the next five, definitely within the next 10 years is even the transportation (laughs) is becoming easier. Like they're going to have self-automated cars where you could just jump in the back seat and go to sleep. You don't even have to drive. So you don't even have to pay attention. You don't have to be at the wheel. So as we advance, it's less and less activity. But what's happening is uh, we're spending a lot of time sitting. And when you sit, it's short shortening your muscles and your body overall, and it's sucking our life force away. So it's really, really important that uh, we combat that with movement. We have to move every single day. Um, just like Kim said, like your, your lifespan actually decreases by sitting, right? So if you're sitting all day, every single day, we're decreasing our lifespan. So it's really important that We become active, especially when you know that you are in a position where you have to sit a lot. You have to counterbalance that by getting out there and moving. Right. And we just kicked off our Health Warrior Challenge of the Month, and that is uh, walking a mile a day. And that's why it's so very crucial to, you know, establish those habits of, uh, you know, walking a mile every day is so powerful in the long run. It will actually lengthen your lifespan. Yeah, if you walk uh, 20 to 25 minutes a day, that can increase your lifespan from three to seven years just from walking. And obviously other forms of exercise is good, but at least if you just get out there and walk, that's going to increase your lifespan. One of the things that we do at our holistic center is uh, with all of our programs, we recommend that people go for walks like after lunch, we go for walks after dinner, uh, not even for long walks because it stimulates your digestion and it um, boosts your immune system. So it's a lot of benefits that come from moving every day. And uh, if you have one of those those Fitbits 
um, and uh, just the step counters. So you want to um, try to shoot for 10,000 to 15,000 steps a day. A mile is approximately like 2,300 uh, steps per day. So you really want to shoot for activity in your life, right? So that'll help you to uh, to monitor that. But uh, we just wanted to point that out. Really important, especially if you're sitting, that you need to get up and move every single day. It's not um, an option. It's a requirement for for your body. So to, to get out there, walk an extra mile on top of uh, your life, I know it can be stressful, but it's adding to your health overall. Yeah. Movement is life. What is that saying? If you don't move it, you lose it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, before we dive into today's episode, I just want to say this is your first episode of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to say that um, it's it's good to be back um, for those who didn't know, I got kicked off of the show. <laughs> I, was, I was fired. Kim, Kim fired me. And, uh, I run a tough ship over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to, uh, you know, plead to get back on the show. <laughs> but um, but no, she did great. It was it was a great show. Oh, thank um, you. Did two shows, right? Yeah. yeah. Two shows. And on top of that, because uh, she's doing the thing, she got invited to be on another uh, podcast, it, it, you know, uh, we want to talk about that a little bit. Oh, sure. Why not? Hey, Kayla, if you're uh, listening, thanks for letting me on your show. Uh, the show is Fair of the Free Child podcast, and it's all about the empowerment of well, raising free people, um, you know, raising our children and even as adults, um, you know, all centered towards self-directed education, people of color and self-directed education. And um, I was invited to, um, you know, come on the show and talk about self-care in terms of, you know, importance of taking care of yourself and uh, did this de-schooling process of unlearning a lot of things that really aren't serving us in these days and times. So I had a great time talking about self-care in terms of health and well-being. Yeah. I'll list those on the show notes page of the episode. Yeah, it was it was a powerful show. Just to talk about it for a second. It was a really powerful show. Oh, thank you. And um, everyone, you definitely want to check that out because you get a chance to uh, listen to Kim, uh, not just completely in the health element, but just talking about parenting. And I think that that's really important. Like when we're trying to live a holistic lifestyle, like everything, when we look at it from a holistic perspective, everything has an effect on you. Everything that you do when you look at your whole life. So the way that you're being educated, the way that you receive information and the way that you're allowed to, to be able to grow and learn is important. Right. So there's a lot of things. And, and I know that everyone can attest to this. There's a lot of things that we weren't able to come into until adulthood because everything was structured mm -hmm. in a certain way as children and it funneled us into a very specific direction, right? So when we talk about being free, we, we talk about the freedom to go in any direction that we want, right? So imagine if we had that option as children to be able to go in the directions that we wanted to go and we got the support and the cultivation behind that. Like that's powerful, right? So we always talk about instilling these things in your children early and you being the example. So they get a chance to, in that podcast, kind of dive into that area. So you definitely want to check that out. Yeah. And I'll list that in the show notes pages of today's episode, which is lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash seven five. So let's dive into today's episode all on the importance of seasonal detoxes. And in episode 35, we discuss the importance of detoxification. Um, so make sure you go listen to that, which is lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash three five. Um, but detoxification is all about that internal hygiene, that internal cleansing. Yeah, Um just to kind of recap that a little bit, right? We get it when it uh, comes to external hygiene. We take showers every day. We brush our teeth. Uh, we wash our hair. But when it comes to doing things internally, uh, people aren't really doing anything. We get so many people that come into the office, you know, 40 years old, 50 years old and have never done any type of cleanse, any type of detox. No, right. nothing to cleanse the inside of their body. The most that they have done is maybe have uh, taken a laxative. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people can recall back when they were little how, you know, their parents used to give them, you know, 
castor oil and cod liver oil flush and out, make yeah. them take the bitters, you know, things like that. Or people even the enema. Yeah, enemas, you know, especially people from the islands. Um, these were normal practices, right? And, and these are things that we've done for thousands of years. We practiced internal hygiene, right? So we don't have a problem with damaging our body. We'll drink alcohol, you know, we'll um, engage in uh, processed foods and for some people drugs. Like we'll do all of the negative stuff, but mm-hmm. we won't do the positive stuff to cleanse our bodies out and to keep them clean, right? If you If you throw a party at your house, and your home gets dirty, like the next day you're cleaning your home, right? It's just, it's just a natural thing. So we have to cleanse our bodies. Sometimes also, um, even though detoxing is getting more popular, um, a lot of people never heard of it yeah. or you associate detox with like losing weight. Yeah. Or, or drugs like drug right. rehabilitation type of thing. Right. Yeah. But it's in, think about it like this internal hygiene, you know, we, we that's the term that we like internal hygiene, practicing good internal hygiene. So when it comes to practicing good internal hygiene, when you're first starting out on your health journey, you definitely need to cleanse. And uh, on episode 35, we gave the formula on like how long you need to cleanse because that's different for for everyone. Right. right. And um, so you definitely want to do that. If you're experiencing health challenges, then you want to also do some serious detoxing and, you know, you'll have very specific uh, cleanses that you need to do based on the uh, the counsel that you get. So those things are different um, and then they're necessary. But once you're on the path and you're um, doing the things that you need to do, you've already gone through your initial detoxing. And now this is just kind of like your regular cleansing uh, we recommend doing seasonal cleanses every change of season to maintain good health. You're doing these seasonal detoxes. So that's four cleanses every single year. And they don't have to be long. It all depends on uh, how diligent you are with your health practices in between uh, your cleanses. Right. So if you're on point and you're eating well and everything is going good, you can actually do a three to seven day uh, right. cleanse like that's that's good. If you've you know kind of been, you know, decent, but you could have did better. A two week cleanse could be good. And if you've just been completely off. 21 day to 30 day cleanse, um, you know, but as long as you, uh, if you're maintaining and doing what you need to do, uh, the ideal is a three to seven day cleanse every change of season. Mm -hmm. And unlike the, um, the general cleanses, uh, you know, you're, uh, doing a full body cleanse when you do kind of a general cleanse. Um, and a lot of the over the counter cleanses, most of those are either full body cleanses or intestinal cleanses. Right. But when you really start to get into the intricacies of holistic living, every change of season, there are different types of shifts and cycles that we're following within the body. So there should be very specific types of cleanses that you do. So every change of season, there are specific organs that you need to be focused on and targeting with your cleanses, right? So there are ways to target your cleanse by how you eat, what um, particular herbs you're taking, what supplements you're taking. You can actually target the areas of your body that you need to cleanse. So we know that if you take, um, like, for example, uh, like um, aloe, right? If you take aloe, aloe is going to uh, help to detoxify the intestines. A lot of people know that, but there are very specific herbs that will help you to detoxify your kidneys, detoxify your liver, detoxify your blood in all areas of the body. You can target them through proper nutrition and, and, uh, you know, herbal practices. So what we want to get into today is not just the importance of doing seasonal cleanses and being in tune with your body, but we also want to point out um, every season uh, which particular uh, cleanses and areas of the body that you need to focus on. Right now, we're in the winter season in New Jersey. And uh, so right now with our clients, we're going through winter cleanses at this um, point in time. But it doesn't matter what time you're listening uh, to this broadcast. Um, 
we're, we're going to give you the tools for every season and the cleanses that you need to do. Like ideally at the beginning of the season is the best time to do your cleanse. So uh, every change of season normally happens around the 21st or the, the, the 22nd um, of a particular month. So you should begin your cleanse depending on how many days you actually begin your cleanse before the seasonal shift right. and you and you cleanse through the seasonal shift and then as we um, transition into the new season, you're starting to kind of come out of your cleanse. So you work with the cycles and now you've prepared your body for that particular season and the, the stress and the things that uh, your body needs to deal with. And if you can maintain that, you can maintain superior health because uh, what happens is with a lot of health challenges and imbalances is it starts with weakness. It starts with toxicity. Right. And, 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 and build up. And eventually, you know, you couple that with nutritional deficiencies. You couple that with stress. You couple that with not getting enough sleep. Um, and everything else that goes on life. And now it just snowballs, yeah, it snowballs into what they call this ease or illness or sickness or imbalances, right? All of these things begin to manifest. Right. Yeah. And also it's, it's like a tune up. Yes. So it helps to break negative patterns of behavior, negative habits. Um, so this is how you live holistically and natural. You, you have to do your tune up. So every three months you're, you're right in the ship. If you, if you've fallen off or you feel it a little off and it just keeps you on the course. Yes. So we're going to touch on each season and some characteristics about that season. And as Jamal said, at the time of this recording, we are in the winter season. And in winter, the organs of the season are the kidneys and the bladder. Yes. Um, when you think about the winter time. And, and let's talk about the summertime. During the summertime, people drink a lot of water. Right. They're thirsty. They're hot. Right. So you want the water. But um, when it gets cold, the last thing that people are thinking about is uh, water. So people tend to drink a lot less water. When mm -hmm. we think about nature, uh, water slows down. It gets cold. It gets icy. Sometimes it freezes over. Everything kind of gets still. And that affects our kidneys and our bladder. Those are in the water element. So it's really important that we give those areas of our body a little love because they're um, under more stress. So this is the time that you want to be drinking um, teas, right? Drinking more herbal teas to get your uh, your water in. Your stews. Yeah, yeah, your stews, your soups, all of those spe specific things, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to focus on cleansing your kidney and your liver, your internal. Or your bladder. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, your kidneys and your bladder. And um, it, we're going to give out uh, a specific herb. There are many herbs, but we'll give out an herb and we'll give a food out that you want to emphasize during these seasons when you're cleansing. So as far as herbs are concerned, you have a marshmallow that coats uh, kidney stones and it helps to slide them out. It's anti-inflammatory and it absorbs toxins and helps to repair the body. So you definitely want to uh, add marshmallow to your herbal regimen. And as far as foods are concerned, um, beans properly um, prepared and properly prepared means that you're soaking your beans uh, with a little bit of um, uh, apple cider. No, not apple cider. My, my mind went blank with um Baking soda, yes. Oh, baking soda. Yeah, you want <laughs> <laughs> apple cider. I don't know what you I was want, thinking. <laughs> you want to uh, soak your beans uh, for twenty four hours with uh, baking soda, a pinch of baking soda, and that deactivates the enzyme inhibitors and it de and it deactivates the phytic acid so you can absorb the nutrition. Also, um, we've mentioned this in previous episodes. A pressure cooker will significantly reduce the time to cook beans. Right, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And fish this time of year is uh, is really good as well as far as the animal foods are concerned. So um, then as far as like your internal work is concerned, now this is more internal. You want to slow things down a bit. So gi chong, yoga, tai chi, walking, all of these internal things are going to bring energy and movement to, to your kidneys. And this time of year, you know, it's cold outside, at least, you know, 
here on the East Coast with our seasonal changes. Um, so you definitely want to be more mindful of when it gets cold. You want to be, you know, you get stagnant. You want to stay inside. You want to hibernate and almost it almost, you know, you should do those things during this time of year, kind of like take it down. But you also want to combat that. So like Jamal mentioned, walking, doing some type of energy work, Tai Chi, yoga, Kijong, um, uh, Kichong, <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. Um, Qigong. Qigong, I'm saying Kichong. Yeah, Qigong. Um, those things help to keep that energy moving so you don't become too stagnant during the winter season. Yes. So the next season is spring, and the organs for the spring are the liver and the gallbladder. Yes, you definitely want to put the work in on your liver and your gallbladder. During the uh, the winter season, you're eating a lot heavier, right? So you're burdening the body. So now as things start to wake up, energy begins to move again. Uh, you know, the, the days are getting longer where it's getting warmer. You want to support that by by, you know, freeing up some of that burden and, and starting to, uh, you know, cleanse the liver, which is going to help to cleanse the blood. We work on the gallbladder uh, because we've eaten more fats during the uh, the winter time. So we want to help to um, decongest the gallbladder. So we want to focus on those specific types of uh, cleanses. So um, as far as foods are concerned, uh, lemons and uh, bitter greens, you want to start increasing your water. And this is the time where um, for the, these types of fasts, like springtime fast, you can do like lighter food so you can do raw foods. Right. You can get into uh, fasting and things like that during this time. And then as far as herbs are concerned, milk thistle is a really good popular herb, but it's good for your liver. It cleanses the liver and gallbladder, it oxygenates your blood and helps to repair blood cells. So uh, the milk thistle herb is a really good herb to take during this time. So uh, also you want to begin to do some more physical exercises. So this is the time that uh, if you haven't been doing resistance training, you want to start getting into some resistance uh, training and weight training and things like that. Right. And it's easier during the spring. That's when you want to start get more, you know, you uh, it's easier to be more active because, you know, the days are getting longer. So just kind of go with the energy of the season. Um, the next season is early summer and the organs for early summer are the heart and small intestine. Yes. So starting to heat up the, the heart is uh, in the uh, small intestines in the summer that is the uh, fire element, right? So it's all about really raising your energy, right? Your digestive system is is higher because uh, it's stronger when the sun is uh, is stronger. We're on, on sun cycles. So during this time, a good herb to take would be hearthorn. That is a really good herb for feeding the uh, cardiovascular system. A really good food would be watermelon, right? So we're having these watery uh, fruits and things like that that are in season. So now we're talking about the sweet fruits and things that um, grow during this time of year. So this is a go. You could definitely um, indulge in this, the sweet fruits and you can just go crazy with the fruits. This is the time that your body is designed to have these things. Right. A lot of times people do cleanses in the winter and they're doing all of these fruits and things like that. And that's not really when you're supposed to have it. It's not in season, right? Mm -hmm. So you're out of balance in a sense. Um, that puts extra stress on your pancreas. So this is the time that you really can enjoy the sweets and things like that and making, um, you know, those great dishes. And you get more into cardiovascular exercises. They call it cardio, right? right. So this is the time that you're doing more cardio. You're outdoors, you're hiking, you're jogging, um, you're, you're doing more intense walks and all the other types of cardiovascular activities. This is the time that they're having different types of races and things like that and competitions and tough mutters and all of these types of things. Mm -hmm. Like this, this is the time that your energy is high. And these are the times that you want to do things like that. Right. The next season is late summer, early fall. And the organs for this season is the stomach and spleen or, and pancreas. Right. So this time of year, right, we're coming off of uh, the summer. We're coming off of all of these sweets, all of these sweet fruits. So now we want to begin to tone down the big 
uh, a little bit, prepare the body for uh, the cold season. We want to uh, cleanse our bodies and, and um, help give our pancreas some love for, for all of the sugar. So for this particular cleanse, you're pulling back on the sweets. So you're doing kind of a sugar detox in a sense, things that turn into sugar, you want to pull back on those things. So a good herb would be a ginger, it's a root. So a ginger root would be really good, very good for circulation, very good for digestion and the pancreas and the, uh, the spleen and the stomach. And then uh, the food String beans. String beans is a powerful, really good for the uh, the pancreas and the blood sugar uh, overall. And uh, whatever exercise routine you're doing, you can uh, continue with uh, your, your current exercise routine. You should have some nice momentum at this point. Right. And the final season is the fall and the uh, the organs for this season, I should say, is the lungs and large intestines. Yeah. So now, you know, you've uh, come off of a good a couple good seasons of, of eating well. And now you want to begin to kind of purge uh, your body and uh, eliminate any type of uh, impaction, any type of waste that's there and to begin to prepare your body to absorb a really good nutrition uh, as you transition into the winter time, the cold flu season. We want to boost our immune systems up, right? So you want to make sure that you're having some um, immune system herbs and also the, the cold air, you know, kind of shocks the lungs a bit. So we want to make sure we're purging and cleansing our lungs. So echinacea is a really good uh, herb that um, you can take and I want to give you another one because the echinacea is for the immune system. And then you have um, elecampane, which is really good for the lungs and the skin. Um, it's like an expectorant. So it helps to, um, you know, push out any type of mucus. And um, an aloe also will add aloe to help to remove uh, bowel poison. And good foods for this time of year would be uh, cayenne, uh, right? So you add cayenne to uh, to your meals, begin to build that energy up, and uh, and lentils. So those are the seasons and the organ of the seasons. And, you know, information about that, the herbs, the foods to eat. And I will be listing a little cheat sheet on the show notes pages to recap this. So if you're driving, I know sometimes it's hard to um, write notes. Um, so just as a reference sheet, I will be um, listing a little cheat sheet in the show notes pages at lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 75. And before we go, we want to talk about our elemental detoxes um, because we understand that sometimes you can get a little overwhelmed on what to do, the diet, the herbs, how to take them. Um, if you have some health challenges, is it okay for you to do a certain detox? So we um, created our own elemental detoxes. We just at the time of this recording, released our winter elemental detox. And that you can uh, learn more about that at lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash shop. And for our Health Warrior members, you guys can get up to um, 40% off. The the program protocols are all in the portal. And all you have to do is get your, your kit. And all the information is on the Health Warrior platform at healthwarrior.co. Yeah, I just want to say that, um, you know, we outlined the different uh, types of cleanses that you should do. Uh, you want to address the food. You want to address what herbs you're taking. You want to address the movement. And there are some other things. We just want to keep it really simple today. If you just do those things, it's going to keep your body in alignment. Um, with our seasonal detoxes, it's a holistic approach. So we get into the the um, exact diet, the things that um, you, you need to avoid as well as the things that you should eat that's going to nourish your system, a series of, uh, you know, herbs that's included with that program, the movements, how, how to address the, uh, the emotional stressors that we deal with that time of year. So, uh, we kind of get into that so you don't have to worry about designing that, uh, yourself, but we want to give you the tools to do that if it's something that you wanted to do. So as far as the elemental detoxes is concerned, no matter when you're listening to this, if you go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash shop, 
whatever season you're in, you just pick the season. If it's the springtime, you pick the spring elemental detox. If it's the fall, you, you pick the fall elemental detox. And once you get the kit, uh, it, you'll get all of the herbs you need. You'll get a booklet and you'll get uh, links to very specific videos um, discussing them. And we always have, uh, you know, conversation going on a different cleanses. So you get some support along with that as well. Right. And you also get access to our private Facebook group where we have weekly live sessions going on in there. And um, so you can get your questions answered because it's also about support doing these programs. Um, you know, no one is the same. We all have different things going on with our health. So, you know, it's not a cookie cutter approach. Um, we just wanted to simplify the process, but we're also here to provide you support for any questions or concerns you may have. Yes. So that is the conclusion of this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening. And for the show notes pages for everything that we referenced in this episode, just go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 75 to get access to the show notes pages. OK, and stay tuned for next week's episode. And until next time, live healthier. Yes. Stay healthy, everyone. Peace and blessings. We want to say thank you for listening to the show and for access to the show notes pages, more podcast episodes, blog content, as well as more information about our center, Life, Strength and Health. Then just visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com. Until next time, live healthier.